right, here we go. Digestion, super quick today. All right, so here's a good little balanced meal. This is what I've prepared all of you for lunch today. Oh, you're so sweet. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. How many of you would eat asparagus? Yeah. I love asparagus. Um, the chicken looks good. Not a fan of rice or radishes. But anyways, it doesn't matter what I like. Anyway, okay. All right. Um, so this is going to be pretty basic for the first couple of slides. So get ready to be um, reminded of what nutrition is. It's just pretty much you eating and uh, processing your food. So nutrition, right? A nutrient is anything that you need to survive. And when I say survival in biology, that means that you have to be able to carry out the life processes, which include respiration, reproduction, movement, digestion, excretion of waste, all that. So nutrients are needed for that. So um, that's what that's mentioning here. When it says that all organisms require nutrients to survive, it says organisms. What does that mean? It has to be, it's alive. All living things require nutrients. Okay, they're not self-sufficient where they make everything for themselves. They require access to other things outside of what they can manufacture on their own. Us included. Okay, so here we have a snake. A looking snake, but it's showing you the process of, it's, and I don't want to say digestion, but the, uh, the movement, the pathway of nutrients through your body. So ingestion just means that you eat it. Digestion just means that you break it down. Another term that you're going to hear here is catabolic. Do you recall what catabolic means? To break it down. Like it means the same thing, but you're not, it's not always going to say, oh, digestion. Okay, it's going to use other terms that we've discussed. So we break it down, and then we absorb it. <clears throat> After you break food down in your stomach, this happens with you as well, it goes into your small intestines, and your small intestines pulls out your small intestine pulls out what it needs and helps replenish those sources in your body. So that occurs during absorption. Anything that we don't absorb means that we're not going to use it, so we, we excrete it, we get rid of it, we lose it. So this is showing um, it, it removing waste, and we're going to go from start to finish on this. Not today, but through this section. Okay? Coming back to nutrients, this takes us back to 1406 where we talked about biomolecules, also called macromolecules, also called organic molecules. What are the four biomolecules? Lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. Amino acids make protein, and I'm grateful you said that because somebody said the exact same thing in third period. So carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, nucleic acids, and then we're going to bring in vitamins and minerals. We didn't call them vitamins and minerals then. We called them coenzymes and cofactors. So I'll remind you of that when we get to those slides. In order to be organic, what does it have to have? Carbon. 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 Inorganic just means non-carbon. Okay? So minerals like calcium salts, phosphate salts, there's no carbon there. Water has no carbon, so it's inorganic as well. Questions so far? All right, here is a chart that you're welcome to refer back to. It has all four of our biomolecules. It tells you how we get access to them from our diet. It tells you what they do in our body and what happens to you if you don't have them. A really good question I had in third period was, so where do we, how do we get nucleic acids in our diet? Chicken, Chicken has nucleic acids. What else has nucleic acid? Anything that was alive has DNA, and if we consume that, we're getting nucleic acid. So I think in their head they were like, so how do you eat DNA? But you don't, I mean you do, but you don't need it just like, oh, I'm just going to have some raw genetic material. You, it's in the cells that you're consuming. All right? So um, we are talking about uh, nu nutrition for animals in this section, okay? So this is definitely gonna parallel with us, which makes it much easier to learn. But when you're an animal, you have an animal cell, 
And what are some characteristics of the animal cells? No cell wall. Okay, we have we still have the vesicles, we have the phospholipid bilayer, but because we have similar cells, we have similar needs, regardless of what type of animal we are. We could be a grasshopper, we could be a human, we have similar needs. They're exact same mean, needs? No. But we have similar methods of metabolism. And I want to remind you that metabolism is not just digestion. When I taught you metabolism, I said it's anabolic and catabolic. We're building up stuff, we're breaking stuff down. And we wrote, I wrote, I drew a chart type thing so you could see all the interchangeable terms. So please don't get stuck in that rut of, oh, it's metabolism, it has to be digestion. Because your brain has a metabolism, your heart has a metabolism, of course your digestive system has multiple metabolisms, your skin has metabolism. So when we talk about they all carry out metabolic functions, that's what we're referencing. But we have similar needs, not exact same needs, but we have different diets. So we have to have different sources of those nutrients that we need. If we're an herbivore, what do we eat? Plants. If we're a carnivore, <coughs> just, just meats. And if we're an omnivore, what about a detrivore? Dead or decaying matter. In your old school days, you called that a de decomposer, right? And we also introduced the term this semester, saprotroph. So a saprotroph also eats dead and decaying things. So it's just becoming familiar with the terminology. Okay, so detrivores, all of that. So what's the whole purpose of us eating? Why are we eating? We are eating to get energy. And then? To make new molecules. To make new molecules, yes. So you eat, you get energy, you replace the proteins and fats that you got rid of. Then you use them. Then you eat. Make more energy, replace the molecules that you've gotten rid of, then you use them. It's a cycle. It's a cycle, okay? So all living organisms require the same four organic macromolecules, and what are those again? Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. All right. Essential. When you see the precursing word essential, this means, in, in, in biology, this means that you have to have it. You metabolically have to have it. So essential nutrients are nutrients that you have to have, but we reference them like this because you don't make them. Because you need them and you don't make them, that means you have to eat them. You have to consume them. Okay? So... Um, I do want to clear this up because this was our third period. So essential oils are something that you need? No. Essential oils is the name of that company. It's are they not allowed to do that? Huh? Are they allowed to Well that's I mean you can make that that's why I I said this is biological. <laughs> so like people, some people may think they're essential, like but they're not for your metabolic processes. Okay, so like if you smell peppermint every day and that makes you not have headaches, okay? But I don't know if it's essential, like you're going to die if you don't smell it. Whatever. Anyway, um, so we have essential amino acids. We know that amino acids are the precursor for proteins. We have essential fatty acids. Whenever it says fatty acids, immediately people begin to think of adipose. Adipose is the extra fat that people are like, oh, I need to get rid of that fat, I need to get rid of that fat. But fatty acids are like linoleic acids. Acids that build our brain. Our entire brain is fat. Okay? So you just have a fat brain. But it's all fat. It's not like fat that's here. Okay? So I want to make sure you understand the difference. Of course, vitamins and minerals, those are also essential, and we'll get into those. I just need you to think more open-minded um, and not be so, hmm, whenever you're looking at these. So essential amino acids, do you remember how many amino acids are on the earth? 
20. There's 20? Yeah, I saw that. Sometimes we just have Logan and his shirt. Um, so, we have 20 amino, amino acids on Earth, 12 of which you and I can make. Which means there are eight that we cannot. So we have to eat them. If you eat meat, you can get all those amino acids from meat. But if you don't eat meat, plants usually don't have them. So what do most people who have these restricted diets need to consume? Multivitamins or some type of supplement, amino acid supplement, in order to get those amino acids there. Okay? Cover that. Questions on this? Fish oil is fatty acids. It is fatty acids. Mm -hmm. Awesome, right? For once. Alright. Essential fatty acids, okay? Although you do need some fat in your body, you're still, you'll still, I don't know how to say this. This is not the fat I'm talking about, like, to gain weight. The, the fatty acids we're talking about here are fatty acids that are needed to serve metabolic functions. And metabolic on the scientific means, like anabolic and catabolic. Now, it mentions linoleic acid. Do you remember the difference between unsaturated and saturated fats? Saturated one is not unsaturated. Very good. Which one's a good fat? Unsaturated. Saturated fats? usually come from animals. They're unhealthy and they're solid. They're the bad fats. Unsaturated fats usually come from plants and they are liquid, so they're the good fats because they don't get stuck. Okay, and we talked about that back in 1406 at the beginning. All right? If, if we eat a balanced diet when you eat meats, you get plenty of fatty acids, the fatty acids you need, okay, um, in a balanced way, in a balanced way, and you make sure you're eating other things as well. Vitamins are also called coenzymes. Minerals are going to end up being called cofactors, so vitamins are coenzymes, and they're considered coenzymes because they help out and Enzyme, like they're the helper to an enzyme, and an enzyme is nothing more than a protein that speeds up a reaction, or it cat catalyzes a reaction. All coenzymes are organic. All coenzymes are organic, so that means vitamins are organic. We have two classes of vitamins. Fat soluble and water soluble. What do you think the difference is? Yeah, one of them can get through the phospholipid bilayer, one of them cannot. One of them is soluble in water and one of them is not. The water soluble vitamins that you and I consume, we use, but if you take excess of it, you just pee it out. And in anatomy, we talk about at the beginning, like people who are like vitamin, like they take 20 different vitamins. Their pee is super yellow, or like a darker color, and it has a really strong scent to it. Because a lot of the vitamins they're taking, they're not using, so we just pee them right out. I mean, it's not right out, but it's hours later that you get rid of them, okay? A fat-soluble vitamin, when you take it, if it's extra, you'll store it. Okay, so fat-soluble vitamins you'll store. Now, you're not going to gain weight because of that. So don't think, oh, I don't want to take fish oils because it's going to be fat. No, these are not like adipose-ish fat. Okay? So, and in this last statement, I feel like is a really good caveat so that you understand just because we're an animal, a snake's an animal, a bear's an animal, and a grasshopper's an animal, do we all have the exact same needs? No, we have similar needs, but we have unique diets, and we live in unique ecosystems, so we have differing needs. Okay. Here is a list of vitamins, very much like the um, 
the biomolecule one I showed you just a little bit ago. These are probably some vitamins that you take, like B12, if you take any vitamins. B12, biotin, a lot of uh, women take biotin for hair, skin, and nails. Vitamin D, all of that. It tells you where you can get it from your food, what function it plays, and what, it happen, what you can expect to happen if you are low in that vitamin. Okay, and it's even divided into water and fat soluble vitamins. Last topic, minerals. Minerals are considered cofactors. It doesn't say that on this slide, but we mentioned coenzymes on the previous one, so I want to make sure we're consistent in our labeling. But minerals are coenzymes and they are inorganic. You only need trace amounts of minerals, which can really be covered through a multivitamin. You take a multivitamin and it has everything that you need. All right? Some minerals we store. Some minerals we store, like for example, calcium. We store that in our bones, all right? And what if we have excess of a mineral and we don't store it? What do we do with it? We get, we get rid of it, okay? We either pee or poop it out, okay? And it mentions, again, that not all minerals are used the same, at the same, in the same amounts or for the same reason in different organisms. For example, iron in us, you and I use iron to carry oxygen. Yeah, so that's that's not the same purpose that it's carried out in every every uh, in every different type of cell, every different type. Of cell. I think you know what All right, this is how far I wanted us to get today. So then we will go through the actual process of food digestion when we come together again on Monday. Um, you're in the lab.